are we alone in this universe? Or are these super buff giant aliens responsible for life as we know it? Ancient astronaut theorists say yes. The ancient astronaut theory suggests we're half human and half extraterrestrial. We're hybrids. Yo, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Film Archives, where I break down movies. That way I can answer the question of was it worth watching? I upload new videos every week, so make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss any of the new content. Today, we'll be breaking down the prequel to the Alien franchise, Ridley Scott's Prometheus. This movie has a star-studded cast, including Charlize Theron, Idris Elba, Michael Fassbender, and many more. With that out of the way, let's just get right into the video. Movie starts off, we see a departing spacecraft leaving a planet, which looks an awfully lot like Earth, where it has left behind a really big, buff alien humanoid. And you know, I thought I knew about all the buff guys, but here comes this buff guy out of nowhere, you know? Total hunk, total hunk. But uh, he drinks a black liquid drink, which seems to dissolve his body because he quickly begins to disintegrate and we see his remains cascade into the nearby waterfall. We then see that in the water, the alien's DNA has begun to break down and recombine itself and sort of, you know, restructure itself. This will come into play later. We then go to the year 2089, where we see two archaeologists by the name of Elizabeth Shaw and Charlie Holloway. They've discovered uh, some ancient, you know, ancient alien artifacts uh, including like cave drawings depicting a star map and they somehow interpret the star map on the cave paintings as uh, like an invitation from humanity's forerunners which they've dubbed the engineers they get like a really rich company to basically fund like a uh, expedition to go find the ancient aliens and stuff like that it's pretty spooky alien shit you know what i mean pretty spooky alien shit we then see a scene of the ship itself, which has been named the Prometheus. They've begun a journey to a distant moon by the name of LV-223. All the crew is traveling in suspended animation, kind of like a stasis hyperbolic time chamber sort of situation. And uh, while they're all asleep, we have David, the android, who is played by Michael Fassbender. And I must say, he does a really, really good job. He basically monitors them, you know, and makes sure that the voyage is going safely and, you know, according to plan. It's wild stuff. We see David kind of looking and watching their dreams, uh, being generally pretty creepy, as Michael Fassbender tends to do. And, uh, yeah, we then see David slowly wake them all up and informs them that they've been asleep for two years, four months, 18 days, 36 hours, and 15 minutes. As the crew wakes up, we have a short, like, little holographic video introduction to the company that has founded the expedition. Uh, we meet an elderly man named Peter Wayland, who is the CEO of this company, and uh, he basically says that... You know, he believes in both the archaeologist Elizabeth Shaw and Charlie Holloway and that they're kind of in charge of the whole the whole thing and that David, the android, is basically like a son to him. But uh, unfortunately, he's not human. So, you know, they just had to kind of put him down there. We see David, the android, clearly get uncomfortable by this. So uh, it's pretty foreboding. We then see the archaeologist Elizabeth Shaw and Charlie Holloway and they explained that, you know, they found these cave paintings from all sorts of different cultures all over the world. And uh, they weren't connected in any way, so it was a little weird. But they basically formed the ancient astronaut theory that, you know, all of these cultures are depicting the same star map that there's no way they could have even known existed because they're primitive cultures. So they decided to follow the star map, thinking that, you know, whoever created humans could possibly be living on this planet and on this moon. So they've arrived on that moon. Uh, they go over the mission and we're introduced to some of the main crew. And, uh, you know, Charlize Theron is basically in charge. She's the mission director. She's been employed by the Wayland Foundation to make sure everything goes according to plan. And then we see Idris Elba, who is the captain. His name is Janik. Uh, we have the two archaeologists, of course, Elizabeth Shaw, Charlie Holloway. And then we have David, who is played by Michael Fassbender. So these are the important characters. The ship begins to land, and we see Idris Elba begin to land the ship on the moon. And I will say, for this movie being over 10 years old, the CGI is actually incredible. I mean, look at that. 
They land on the moon, which is super barren and very mountainous, and uh, quickly they spot an artificial structure of some kind. You know, the Charlie Holloway's like, God doesn't build in straight lines, land right there. It's just pretty crazy stuff. We then see the team suit up and they're getting ready to go explore the structure. We see that the scientists are escorted by security and they take David, the android, who has been studying ancient languages for the past two years in hopes that they could possibly communicate if there are any survivors. We get a brief interaction with the android David, who is clearly sentient at this point and just wants to be treated equally. But uh, some real AI revolution shit, you know, it's kind of like a Terminator moment. I'll be back. But uh, so far, this movie's super dope. Not gonna lie, it's super dope. The pacing's really good, picks up right away, and it keeps going really well. So the group approaches the artificial structure, and they find that it is hollow inside. The team then decides to go in and explore it. Inside, we find that the structure has an artificial atmosphere that has been created, which is evidence that the people there before them were terraforming the planet. Absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. So the crew, as they're exploring, comes across some holographic footage of some of the ancient aliens where we see them running and it seems like they are, uh, you know, in a panic. So the crew follows this holographic footage where they come across the corpse of one of the aliens, which has been decapitated by one of the giant doors. It's pretty scary stuff, not gonna lie. David manages to open the door inside the structure. We see like a huge humanoid head in there. It's like a huge monolith type situation. We see the severed head of the alien and its body there. And uh, it's really horrible. So they get his head. And then we also see that there are like a ton of urns or jars of some kind uh we're not sure what they have inside but there's a bunch of them as the crew finds these alien bodies a couple of them get really uncomfortable so they decide you know what i'm out of here i wasn't here to you know find bodies of aliens i was only here to study rocks and things of that nature so they dip out and they're like you know what we're going back to the ship you guys can handle all this dead alien shit on your own as they attempt to return to the prometheus ship they get lost inside the structure which just is not good it's not good We then see the crew has found a ton of other bodies. They date the remains to 2,000 years ago. So they basically come to the conclusion that the entire species has been extinct. It's really sad. You get really hardcore HR Geiger vibes here, though. It's really cool. I will say that much. The expedition into the structure is suddenly cut short when there's like a huge storm approaching. So, you know, Captain Janik, Idris Elba, basically tells the crew that they need a return right now. And, uh, you know, they need to get back to the ship. We then see Elizabeth Shaw recover the alien head and secretly David takes one of the urns and, you know, the little canisters with them. We then see the remaining, you know, canisters start leaking like a dark liquid. It's not good. It's very foreboding, but we don't know what it is. The crew then returns to the ship where we see the captain, Janik, Idris Elba's character. He questions them and is like, where are the other two? You know, uh... They're supposed to be Milburn and Fifield with you, those two other scientists. Where did they go? And uh, we then see that they're still lost inside the structure. And, uh, you know, they're basically trapped inside the structure until the storm outside is done. We then go to the ship's lab. And I will say again that for this movie being over 10 years old, the CGI, I mean, look at that. Just look at that. It's crazy. It's crazy. The scientists are able to send, you know, like electricity and kind of wake up the decapitated head somehow. I'm not really sure how that works, but they're able to, you know, get it to open its eyes. And uh, shortly after, it just explodes everywhere. And uh, it's kind of a terrifying scene. You know, it's really off-putting, gets you kind of like uneasy. It's a really good scene, though, I will say that. The scientists are then able to confirm that the alien DNA actually matches that of humans on Earth. So the theory that they were, you know, humanity's forerunners is actually correct. So the ancient astronaut theory is correct. And the answer is a potential yes. It's insane. It's insane. We then see David kind of investigating and uh, seeing what was inside the canister that he took and, you know, the black liquid inside it. He's not sure, but he, you know, intentionally puts it inside like a alcohol bottle and kind of taints one of the drinks with some of the dark black liquid but anyway he he gives the drink to charlie holloway who drinks it unknowingly and uh shortly after you know charlie holloway goes and meets with elizabeth shaw and you know they kind of have a romantic moment 
we see that Elizabeth Shaw is unable to have kids. So Charlie cheers her up by, you know, giving her the D, you know? So they have sex. We have a little sexy scene. It's pretty cool, pretty cool stuff. We then go back inside the artificial structure where we see the two other scientists that were left behind, Milburn and Fifield. Uh, we see that they have come across like a snake-like creature of some kind, some kind of weird little alien tentacle. Yeah, it crawls around that guy's arm and like just snaps it like a freaking twig. It's absolutely nuts, super brutal stuff, you know. The other scientist, Fifield, cuts it and tries to cut it off, you know, tries to save the guy, and it sprays like acid all over his helmet, and it just totally just melts his face. It's super brutal, dude. It's super brutal, but they're both dead at this point, you know. So the crew returns the next day and they, you know, try to recover Milburn and Fifield, the two scientists that were separated. We also see that all the canisters in the jars have uh, begun to like leak the black liquid out and it's just it's terrible, terrible. We see David has separated himself from the group to go after a probe that's basically picking up a life form of some kind and uh you know he finds like a cargo room and like a control room and he also finds like a surviving alien like one of the big engineer guys he finds one of them in like cryostasis so he's like in his hyperbolic time chamber just fucking chilling it's crazy it's crazy as the crew's exploring and attempting to find milburn and fifield we see that charlie holloway has just gotten like sick out of control they all rush back to the ship trying to save you know charlie holloway who's just begun to get like super super sick at this point and he looks like he's like gonna die and stuff we see the mission director miss vickers charlie starin just refused to let him on board and basically is like no this is quarantine essential workers only kind of stuff it's crazy she's like threatening him with like a flamethrower and is like you're not coming back on board the ship and you know if you guys want to stay with him you're more than welcome to but you're not coming back on the ship with him it would appear that charlie holloway is in like immense pain at this point so he's just like urging miss vickers on he's like yeah you know what just kill me burn me baby burn me like quarantine me good you know what i mean i'm not an essential worker so come on baby light my fire and uh you know she does so she burns him to death with a flamethrower and elizabeth shaw his girlfriend wifey just starts like crying and really losing it it's really sad it's really sad so since they were all sick they all begin to get like a medical scan kind of quarantine thing you know and we see that uh Elizabeth Shaw, who wasn't supposed to be able to have kids, is now, like, in advanced pregnancy. It would appear that she's been pregnant for three months, which shouldn't be possible because, as we previously saw, she was in, like, you know, cryostasis, so there's no freaking way. David, Michael Fassbender, the AI android, is basically full-on psycho at this point, and uh, <laughs> he's kind of, like, taunting, you know, Elizabeth Shaw about, like, Holloway's death and, uh, you know, basically just being, like, an overall piece of shit you know but he convinces her that you know she needs to calm down and he like sedates her with like some hardcore dope and basically just wants to keep her pregnant i don't know it's crazy but he you know he yeah he sedates her and you know tries to put her back into cryostasis and uh it's absolutely nuts Suddenly, Elizabeth Shaw wakes up from being sedated and, you know, she freaking fights off the people who are trying to put her back into stasis. And she runs to the medic bay where they have like a medic pod. Super fancy technology. Very expensive stuff. Very expensive stuff. This is a very brutal scene. I will say, you know what? Listener alert that uh, if you're squeamish to stuff like this, just, just skip ahead skip ahead she uses the automated surgery table to extract like a squid type creature baby from her abdomen it's honestly super gnarly stuff i'm not even gonna lie but uh she then you know kind of locks it inside the medic pod there and freezes it and you know dips out and uh it's crazy she then kind of wanders through the ship and we see that uh the ceo peter whalen has actually been in stasis aboard the prometheus and uh you know, she comes across him and is like, what are you doing here? And he basically explains to her that he actually wants to ask the engineers personally how to live forever and not die from old age. Because, you know, he's looking pretty geriatric at this point. And he's just a geriatric old fuck. And, you know, she's like, no, they're all dead. There's no way you can talk to them. To which we see David, the AI robot, say, no, I actually found one alive. And we're taking Peter Wayland over there right now. And if you want to come, you can. We then go outside the ship where we see the scientists from earlier who 
was separated from the group, Fifield, he has returned, and he's now a mutated monster. He's like full-on Toxic Avenger stuff, you know? He's coming in there, and uh, he's come, he wants to get on board. So he starts, you know, just rampaging. He goes and kills, like, several people. I'm not even going to lie. He kills, like, multiple people in these scenes. I don't know. Let's get a kill count real quick. <laughs> super brutal stuff you know but eventually he gets killed even more brutally than he killed the other people we then see the captain janik who is played by idris elba talk to elizabeth shaw and explain to her that he thinks the structure was like a alien military base where they were you know using biological weapons and they lost control of it so he thinks that the black liquid is like a biological weapon and uh, he also speculates that this is just their moon and not their planet, hence why they have all these spaceships over there in the artificial structure. Elizabeth Shaw then replies to Janik that one of the aliens is still alive and uh, she wants to know what it has to say. You know, and Janik just says, I don't care. We should leave and go home. Honestly, I'm not going to lie. Uh, Idris Elba's character is probably one of the best characters in the movie maybe only bested by Michael Fassbender's David, but the acting is just top. It's top. Not gonna lie. We then see Peter Wayland with David preparing a crew to return to the artificial structure so they can go, you know, ask the alien how not to die and stuff like that. But we then see Charlize Theron come out and kind of ask some questions about where they're going and, you know, why they're doing it, to which Peter Wayland says, you know what, I want to go ask the engineer the last living alien you know how not to die and she goes you know what you should have died a long time ago that's what parents do you know they live they have their legacy and then they they pass on father so she calls him father it's crazy it's like a little plot twist but it turns out that meredith vickers Charlize theron is actually the daughter of peter wayland you know the founder of the wayland corporation you know the people who are paying for the expedition. It's crazy stuff, it's crazy stuff. Plot twist, I guess. But the team then preps to return to the alien structure where we see David and Shaw have a brief conversation. And uh, Shaw at this point begins to see David's true nature. And uh, David basically compliments her survival instincts where we see Elizabeth Shaw kind of question David's integrity and kind of thinks that, you know what, maybe this AI robot as actually sentient and maybe he's actually evil and doesn't like his creators. It's not good. It's not good. Peter Whalen, the geriatric fuck, is assisted by a mech suit since his old ass can't get around no more. But, uh, you know, they make it back to the structure and David mentions that the air down there is actually perfectly breathable because they've terraformed inside the uh, artificial structure. And Elizabeth Shaw's like, that's not true. You know, uh, Charlie Holloway got sick. It might have been from breathing this air. And David's like, that's not what got him sick. So at this point, Elizabeth Shaw is like full on suspicious of David and is basically pretty sure that he's the one who like poisoned him and stuff like that. It's it's not good. It's not good at all. But yeah, they make their way into the alien cargo hold where the last living alien engineer is still in cryo sleep. And along the way, we see a ton of those uh, canisters that have like the black liquid bioweapons inside them, as well as like an entire ship that's being held inside the artificial structure. We then see Elizabeth Shaw ask David, you know, why are these aliens here and where were they going? And David basically explains to her that they were actually headed towards Earth. So, uh, you know, sometimes to create, you gotta destroy, basically, type thing. It's crazy, it's crazy. I think this is a callback to the beginning of the movie where we saw that super buff alien drink the liquid and, uh, you know, kind of have his DNA like restructure itself in the waterfall so i'm pretty sure that in the past since they're 2000 years old that they sent one of these aliens to earth and that alien basically drank that liquid and it kind of created like you know the building blocks of dna as we know it crazy and uh david basically says you know sometimes to create you got to destroy so i guess that would explain why that alien destroyed himself very bizarre bizarre we then see David wake the alien engineer from stasis, and uh, he's so badass looking, I'm not even gonna lie, he's like 10 feet tall and just beefcake status, and I, you know, I thought I knew about all the buff guys in this movie, but then here comes this other buff guy, it's crazy. 
So David speaks to him because, you know, he knows like a bunch of ancient languages and, you know, he's asking the questions for Peter Wayland of how not to die, you know, and how to live forever. And uh, Shaw's like interrupting them and asking them, why did you create us if you just want to destroy us? So, uh, you know, it's a lot of yelling. And I think, you know, after being asleep for like 2000 years, the alien just didn't want to hear this shit and he didn't want to wake up to people arguing and stuff like that. So he just goes fucking Jack Kerouac on him. And uh, he, like, rips off David's head. It's super brutal. And then he freaking beats Peter Wayland with the head and pretty much kills them both right then and there. It's absolutely insane. He basically kills everybody there. So <laughs> Elizabeth Shaw sees this, and she's like, oh, hell no, I don't want no part of this, and just dips. Fast as fuck, boy. <laughs> she straight up dips. We then see the alien reactivate his spacecraft, and uh, I'm not going to lie, he, he has, like, some super cool-looking suits. It's like straight up HR Geiger art. It's really dope. But uh, Shaw's running and she's escaping. And, you know, she basically warns Janik over the, the radio that, you know, the engineer is planning to go to Earth and release all of the bioweapons on board their cargo hold and, you know, destroy Earth. So he needs to stop them somehow. Idris Elba basically agrees and says, you know what, his one job is to make sure none of that shit gets back to Earth. So he'll stop it any way he can. Janik, Idris Elba, and his two remaining crew members kind of come to the agreement that, you know what, we are either going to die heroes or we're going to live long enough to see ourselves become the villain. So we're going to ram ourselves into that ship. Since the Prometheus is just a scientific vessel, they have no weapons on board. So it's pretty heroic stuff i'm not gonna lie you know meredith vickers who is still on board charlie Theron is in like total disagreements with this but uh they basically mutiny her and are like you know what you can get on the escape pods and take off and you know have two years of life where you could stay here on the ship with us but either way we're crashing into the aliens because we're not letting him take that shit back to earth we're not allowing it we then see janik eject all the life pods and uh you know miss vickers Charlie Theron also ejects on one of the escape pods in the process. We then see the Prometheus just crash into the alien spaceship and it's like super heroic shit, you know what I mean? And, and unfortunately, you know, the alien spacecraft just crashes onto the ground and it freaking actually c crashes right on top of uh, Miss Vickers, the mission director, and it kills her. We then see Elizabeth Shaw make her way back to the escape pods where she discovers that her alien offspring is actually still alive. So it survived all of that shit and uh, it's grown to like enormous size. It's terrifying stuff. It's terrifying stuff. We then see David, the android's head, still alive and it contacts Elizabeth over the radio to warn her that the alien is coming for her and he's super mad that, uh, you know, they crash into his spaceship so he's basically gonna go kill all the humans now. Any humans left are dead. We then see the engineer like force his way through the escape pod doors and is like trying to kill Elizabeth Shaw. It friggin' it's so scary but yeah, he like attacks her and uh, you know, they get into like a, a freaking confrontation but Elizabeth Shaw, thinking on her feet, releases her alien offspring onto the engineer and uh, it like attacks him. And it's really scary, but it's like when it's like a giant version of those aliens that would stick to your head, like those fish, starfish, squid things that like stick to your face and then like, you know, go in and plant like eggs inside you and shit. It's so scary. But yeah, it basically wraps its freaking tentacles around the engineer's face and uh you know like shoves a big thing down his throat so it's like a callback to the old alien movies like those uh spider squids that would stick to your face it's really scary but uh it basically finishes off the engineer we then see david contact elizabeth one more time and you know tells elizabeth shaw that there's more alien spacecraft and that he can help her get off the planet if she saves him so elizabeth shaw recovers david's remains and uh you know with his help they are able to launch another alien spacecraft however she doesn't want to return to earth she intends to reach the alien homeworld and wants to understand why they attempted to destroy humanity we then go back to the escape pod on the planet where we see that the engineer has been killed by the squid-like creature uh shortly after we see an alien burst out of his chest It's crazy. Yeah, we see the alien burst out of the engineer's chest and we witness the birth of a slightly cute xenomorph alien. But yeah, it's crazy stuff, man. Prequel concluded, actually. 
then that's the end of the movie. Honestly, extremely good, really good setup for the Alien franchise. I'm not even gonna lie, like considering this was made, you know, many years after the Alien franchise, and this is a prequel, and kind of, you know, explaining the origins of the Xenomorph Alien, super good dude super good there are so many nuances and deeper meanings to the overall script and to the plot i mean it was just superb was this movie worth watching i would definitely say this movie was worth watching i would recommend watching this movie even if you're not like a fan of sci-fi and even if you're not a fan of the alien movies like you should just watch this movie because it's really well done it's absolutely worth watching all right, that will do for this one. Please be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed the video. And remember to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the new videos. And please be sure not to have any aliens burst through your chests. But until next time, peace! Are we alone in the universe? We don't know. But we will know one day, that's for sure.